Awesome. All right. Well, we'll wait a couple more minutes and then uh, we'll get started because we are a minute over, but uh, we are expecting Lisa. We're expecting Shiamak as well, who is uh, our representative. I just learned from Mustafa's uh, last session that he's from Ottawa. So um, yeah, that's really cool. So uh, Dwayne as well should be joining us. So let me just check the list again, make sure that if he is here, I can just manually invite him. But no, I'm not seeing that yet. All right. Awesome. Well, it is exactly 317. So uh, let's start. Let's uh, let's start with a warm welcome. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And again, congratulations on a fantastic year. Um, so yeah, really, I wanted to start with a congratulations. And maybe I'll have you start just by introducing yourself and uh, maybe include in a little bit of background how long you've been in real estate and specifically how long you've been at Solo, uh, just to let our audience know a little bit about you, a little bit about your background. So Himanshu, I'll start with you. Yeah, hi, my name is Himanshu Sharma. Uh, last year was my third year, third full year in um, real estate. And um, I'm with Zolo since the beginning. And that's all, that's my whole journey into real estate. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> well, thank you again. Uh, yeah, Stephen and Kristen Tedford, thank you for joining me. What about you guys? How long have you been in real estate and how long has it been with Zolo? Yeah, I'll let you start. Um, this, this will be my 10th year in real estate. Uh, I think coming up in May or June. And then uh, I think it is the first week of April uh, coming up will be uh, two years with Zolo. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's great. That flies. <laughs> yeah, and I've been about five years or so in real estate. Awesome. That's great. Well, thank you so much, you guys. So obviously you had a fantastic year um, it, and it was a crazy year. It was uh, it definitely threw everybody for a loop 2020. So I wanted to ask you guys how you were able to pivot your business, um, you know, in in a year like 2020, despite a worldwide pandemic. So maybe I'll start with that uh, with you, Stephen and Kristen. <laughs> um. <laughs> Jump right in. Sure. It's nuts, right? Like, I mean, we were all in the same boat last March, and we we started the year off, um, you know, pretty good. We, you know, we had some good listings, and and it was in that time frame where people were, you know, buying before they were selling, and, and then the pandemic hit. And we had some clients that were sort of stuck in that middle slot of, oh my God, I've bought a house and now I have to sell my house and no one had any idea, you know, what was going to happen. So it was tough for the first, you know, um, two, three months there while everyone was just sort of getting used to what this new new world is now going to be and you know trying to navigate and and pivot um all of the different protocols that you had to do for showings and and i think one of the biggest things for us with our customers in 2020 is just it was um going even further deeper in communication with our clients and and really um, you know, helping them understand. <laughs> and it was a lot of phone calls and a lot of, you know, talking them through everything that, that was happening along the way. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, uh, a big thing about it too was, because we were all trying to figure out what the rules were. What could you, could you go on a showing? <laughs> you know, could you, um, you know, be in person? How many people, all the different government rules changing is, I think the biggest thing was being, confident in our knowledge about the market and what we were doing in as real estate agents and i think that really helped a lot of our people um let's say continue their journey on they might have slowed it down um but they they continued moving forward uh going through the process and like you mentioned uh jane is kind of adapting and pivoting and turning you know you have to this whole year has been about that and our biggest thing is always in real estate, even before this, in our presentations to people, when we talk about in listings, is everything we try to do is proactive, not reactive. Um, you know, and again, COVID <laughs> changed that a bit, but I'd like to think that everything we were still doing was proactive, um, not reactive to, to the changes. 
Yeah, absolutely. It was all about anticipating the unknown, which was such a difficult thing to do last year. So before we carry on the conversation, I would like to welcome, I have Lisa Nash joining, Sia Mack and Dwayne. Thank you for joining me today. Congratulations to all of you on the top producer status here at Zolo. So I'll just quickly give you guys a minute, uh, if you don't mind, just introducing yourself to the group, um, maybe uh, including there how long you've been in real estate and how long you've been with Zolo. So Lisa, I'll, uh, I'll ask you to introduce yourself now. Next. Okie doke. I'm Lisa Nash and um, I joined Zolo in, well, sort of in 2014. I, I was sort of a, uh, I started out as a partnering agent back then. Zolo partnered with um, different brokerages and I was at Royal Page. So um, that was, uh, uh, so, and, and uh, Royal Page partnered with Zolo. So I was lucky enough to be an agent uh, uh, to be part of the whole Zolo team. Um, and, uh, and sorry, what was the other question? No, that's it. So how long in real estate and how long was Zolo? So, oh, okay. <laughs> yep. so I've been in real estate uh, since 2010. So, yeah, so I spent a good uh, six years, seven years, I guess, already uh, working uh, working with Zolo. Awesome. Well, it's nice to see you on this panel again, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. See you, Mac. I'll let you introduce yourself next. Uh, see you, Mac. Sasani, so, um, I have a formula for my name. Uh, we have a friend. His name is Mac, and you're telling him, see you, Mac. Uh, that's how... I tell my clients to remember my name. Uh, I've been an agent since 2017. Uh, joined uh, Zolo uh, in 2019. Okay, great. Excellent. And Dwayne? Yes, my name is Dwayne Clugston. I've been a real estate agent since 2015. I started out with Century 21, and I have been with Zolo since last year, February 2nd, 2020. Awesome. Sorry. And how long in real estate? Uh, since 2015. So six years. Okay. Wow. Awesome. Amazing. So very encouraging, I think, for those of uh, those agents who are listening and maybe have a few years under their belt, it is possible to achieve status <laughs> uh, quite quickly. So we were just discussing how uh, 2020 affected us and how you guys were able to pivot. Um, so what what did you do last year that ensured that you had a great year? And here you are. Conventional, I'll ask you next. Hi. So uh, I feel I did not do anything very differently. Uh, just took all the precautions while showing, and clients have some reservations about going into the houses. And I just told them, as you go in a grocery store, you can go in a home. We need to take precautions, and that's all I did differently. Nothing else. But but, the, but the, there was automatically too much business there out there after COVID. I did not work for full two months from April to May. I I was at home. My leads were switched off because I have a mother. She's 78, lives with me. And we were a little terrified the way the disease unfolded. So I decided to stay at home for two months. But after that, it just skyrocketed. So yeah, just attended to my client's call, show them houses, and it happened. Yeah, I've heard that that's uh, quite consistent with the realtors that I've spoken to, that their business was essentially interrupted for uh, April and May. Is that consistent on this panel as well? Did things slow right down or were you still keeping busy during those two months? Slow down. <laughs> Not all, I can say that for me personally, it was the opposite. January, February, March was very slow. I didn't have anything. And then boom, April, May, June, it took off and it was crazy. Uh, and but some agent in, in Ottawa were complaining and um, saying what uh, was said here again. Uh, some of them made some uh, slowdown. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so I'm interested to know what uh, were some changes maybe that you implemented that you plan on carrying through into 2021 and beyond the pandemic. Lisa, I'll throw that one to you. Yeah, for me, um, I actually uh, took the time to uh, create sort of more of an online presence. So um, I have, if, if you go on my uh, my site, I uh, did, you know, uh, talk about how I handle buyers and sellers during COVID. So I have a video that explains how I, uh, how I help clients. So um, when COVID hit, I was pretty 
proactive in, in getting things sort of uh, in place. So um, I have a whole process where I uh, invite clients, my, my buyer clients, uh, to an online Zoom meeting and uh, and then do a whole buyer's presentation and get them you know, signed up and committed to me over Zoom. So in many ways, I, I hate to say it, but COVID has been a really sort of good thing for me, which uh, sounds bad, but I mean it in the way that uh, it uh, allowed me to create a better system. And uh, it's way, way easier and uh, uh, better and a better use of my time to be, you know, in, in my house doing a buyer consult with somebody than, you know, having to, to kind of drive all around and, and whatever. So, it made me way more efficient. So mm -hmm. that's what really helped with uh, with my business. I see a few of you nodding your heads and giving thumbs up. <laughs> that's great. Dwayne, I'll ask you, have you implemented anything uh, that you plan on carrying forward? Yeah, as far as, uh, I think the main thing was just letting clients know that uh, we've been through different things in the past. We've all had hurdles to overcome. And uh, I think the main motive behind what's happening, I think a lot of people are just paralyzed by fear. And what I was, I was just trying to assure my clients, like, yes, take the precautions that we need to take, but let's move on and let's move forward here. Uh, the world's not going to stop just because of a pandemic. So it's just more like counseling the people through and letting them know that, hey, it's going to be all right. Let's just go for it and make the best of it and see this as an opportunity instead of as something that we just need to, you know, hide in our house and not do anything until this thing actually stops. Because the people that did that back in March and April, they'll still be hiding in their house, right? So I just kind of assured the people that everything's fine, we just keep moving forward. And then I just kept uh, following up uh, with people as they came, as things started picking up more and more. I just feel it's really important that we just get to the clients right away and just uh, make them feel that they're comfortable and I'll walk them through the process. Yeah, great point. Yeah, what I'm hearing you say is that the communication was consistent throughout everything, just reassuring your clients, even if they're, you know, even if they were on the fence, perhaps about buying. So that's yeah, definitely a great tip. Um, I wanted to ask you guys as well, since we do have a lot of new agents joining the brokerage, uh, to become a top producer, what is something that you would recommend a newer agent focus their time on? I'll let you think about that. <laughs> uh, uh, Kristen and, and Stephen, I'll ask you what you would recommend. Yeah. Uh, I would think... Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> one specific thing. Um, I said it to an agent the other day is, I think you have to, like an octopus, have you know different tentacles, like one in the community, uh, one in your sphere of, of family and friends. Um, even one in something you enjoy doing, whether it be a sport, soccer, hockey, um, you know, the arts or something like that. It, I think you have to branch out into a little bit of everything because we all know that your business is not coming from one direction. It's coming from all around you. And again, it's just being proactive in all those things and and being positive and, and just attracting it, you know, into your, into your knowledge uh of being a, um, you know, a wealth of knowledge to to anyone that's asking a question, uh, real estate directly or real estate related, if you will. You know, I think we've all picked up extra skills over the years about, you know, handy uh, household tips and um, just even our knowledge of working with good mortgage brokers or good lawyers. That sure we're never going to speak over their knowledge, but we have knowledge to direct um, people's questions towards those, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. That makes a lot of sense. If you don't have the answer, you know somebody who does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, anybody else want to comment on that? Recommendations to a new agent and how they should be dedicating their time? I'll comment. Sure. I uh, honestly, I would say uh, get out in the field as quickly as possible and work the lease leads because the leases are actually yeah, probably, you know, a, a lot tougher. I, I'm sure everybody will agree. Leases are, are way more work and you learn a whole bunch of stuff uh, when you're when you're working with uh, with leases. 
So, and, and Zolo gets tons and tons of leases. So, um, I mean, if I was a new agent, I'd do everything and anything um, to get out into the field. Um, you know, ask uh, agents if you can shadow them. Um, I would, uh, you know, even, you know, learning things like, um, you know, uh, how to use a lockbox for the first time, where to find lockboxes, uh, things like that, that you have no clue yeah. until you actually go out and do something. So, I mean, my advice is to just learn as much as you can as quickly as possible because uh, real estate is a, a tough business. Yeah. If yeah. I mention something, mm -hmm. I think uh, I can say, I can speak for an hour about what things can be done as an agent because we can Google how can you become a great agent and all the ideas in the world will be on the screen for you. It's not about the idea, there's no cost for this. Is take an idea that you like, it works for your personality and really implement it. Put your time and effort and read about it. So I tell you an example. I call a Zolo lead or a Zolo lead calls me and my conversation, usually we learn in other brokerages that qualify the lead, ask them questions, ask them if they have pre-approval and this and that. I don't do any of that. So if somebody calls and say, uh, I'd like to know more about 1234 Main Street, I say, when do you like to go and see it? Oh, tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Okay, what's your name? What's your stuff? I already have them on my... Uh, CRM, I just double check everything. I'll see you tomorrow at four. I'll make phone calls to make sure that there's no overbooking because we cannot overlap. Um, I'll uh, text you a confirmation and I'll go and take them out and show them the proof. And last September, October, November, I had like at least five to ten showings a day. And it was not for my client, it was for me to learn the market, for me to go out and be, um, I have personal leads that came from Zolo leads. And the Zolo lead end up not buying. But their friend that they referred, they ended up buying. I didn't tell Zolo because they might, you know, um, <laughs> want commission, but, uh, but that's the reality of the market. You have to be out, you have to be about, Time allocation is another very important thing that you can do as a new agent. Eight o'clock in the morning, eight to 10 is the best time to call clients or four to six, statistically. Uh, there are things you can block times to do certain things. Read books. If you don't read a book every month, you're wasting your life. You can learn a lot from people who went through this several hundred times and they know more than you can imagine. So. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to really become genius in creating ways. Find your niche, find where you're good at, and really excel at it. A lot of us try to find what, is, what, we, what we are lacking and we're trying to compensate and going and train ourselves in what we, are, we lack. Forget about fixing your shortcomings. Find what you are best at and make, become great at and everything else will fall into place. And I think uh, other producers here can also uh, add to what I said. Yeah, I met you. I, I would actually recreate what uh, CMX has said. I'm, I'm a firm follower of uh, showing the house first. So I don't ask them anything. I don't ask them pre-approval. Uh, I have started asking recently if they're working with a realtor, but initially I never used to ask that also. Because what if I prove to be a better realtor than their existing one? And uh, if they want to see one house, I show them normally three. And I tell them that less see that for education. So, and that is the way to have more time so we can build some rapport with them. I uh, suggest the new agents uh, to the new agents. Uh, don't worry too much about uh, talking to your leads on phone. Show them the house first. Even if they ask me, you know, they ask me what what kind of house is it, how old it is, and I always say let's go and see it first, because some houses are old but they look nice from the inside. So let's go and see the house. So 
I would say the golden rule is uh, face to face. Go and meet them first. Go to the in-person meeting. Yeah, and we're getting yeah. some questions coming in on the chat here that once you do take them out, so if you're not going to pre-qualify them, you're going to go right to the showing. How do you then build trust? What are some techniques that you guys do to show value, you know, during a 15-minute showing? Any comments on that? Yeah, well, I can say what, um, what I normally... I go out there to help them buy. I, I'm not going out there to sell them something because people don't like salesmen nowadays as such. So I don't go there as a salesman that I'm going to you know, um, sell you this home. I just go there to help them. And that I do. And they, if they can see the genuine interest, my genuine interest in helping them, they, they trust me because that, that's the way they, they want to see me. And as I have started practicing since beginning, I normally ask them if they like some coffee or if they say yes, I take some coffee. If I know they have kids, I take a pack of Timbits. That that's, breaks the ice in the beginning. And that is all. Yeah, that's a great takeaway. You're there not to sell, but to help. I love that. Uh, sorry, Siamak, you were gonna say something. It's all about service. This is what I think everybody else agree here, and we all know, but how we are implementing that. Taking a client to a showing, be there 10, 15 minutes before them. This is a, a very important thing. Most of the buyers experience other agents, and they usually arrive before the agent, and they wait outside, and the agent comes 10, 15 minutes late, and always there is traffic issue. Don't do that. Call. If you, when you arrive, go in, open the door, open the lights, uh, text them that you are inside waiting for them. When they come, be at the door, open the door for them, welcome them in, tell them about COVID, whatever, introduce yourself. Um, before you even go, the night before, send them as much information as you can about the listing. Like go to Geo Warehouse and create a report and send it to them with their names on it. It's all about service. I help clients to buy houses without getting a dime in commission. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about how much you're making. Don't worry if it's a Zolo lead or not lead. Don't, don't, don't go with the commission breath, you know, calculating in your mind because people are smart. They're not dumb. They totally understand you want something else than service them. So as a, a rule for yourself or for ourselves, we should, provide as much information. When I am on the phone with my buyers, at the end, my wife says, was that really a real estate phone call? <laughs> you, tell, you, know, you talked about their mortgage, your, their resume, their work, their health. And I, I want to be, uh, you know, um, frank and honest with everybody. As soon as I meet my clients, if I don't feel that the trust level is built I use a, a secret card I have, that, uh, which is I tell them I'm a physician and I look after my clients like my patients. And that dynamic completely shifts. So I use that few times, not all the time, you know, it, usually I don't need it. But once they realize, so bring something about yourself that provides value, make them trust, tell them story about yourself, show them anything that humanize you rather than somebody who is chasing to sell the house. And one way of that, if, if they enter to a place that you really think is not the best thing, be the one who tell them that is, let's walk out of here. That is not the best place for you. And be the honest consultant that they really help, especially first time home buyers. They always, some of them ask at the end, this is a, an eye opener for me after taking them like 10 times out, they ask, they ask me, see, like, how much we have to pay you <laughs> at the end? So I assume that everybody knows. Assume that they don't know until they prove you wrong. So be upfront, tell them everything, and service, service, service. This is you're building your community. Provide them with as much information. Provide them all the... Open the doors for them. Put them in the right track. And 
be there when they are falling because they will fall several times after losing, you know, uh, an offer or two or three, sometimes many more, and be the optimistic voice and realistic voice for them. Yeah, all great advice. Thank you for that. I have Monique Drake commenting here in the chat, also giving suggestions to add value. So as uh, Sienna said, you know, show up, know the properties, show up with the geo warehouse report, but also explaining the process, explain what they need to do, put them in touch with a mortgage broker, all those things add value. So yeah, great comments there. Um, another question coming in from Jennifer, how many properties do you show before you tell them enough is enough? Never. No, enough is enough. Never. I show the family 120 houses before they buy, and they bought a $200,000 unit, $220,000 unit. And that's a big money. It's, you have to take the good with the bad. I showed another family two houses, and they bought a $800,000 house. So you, you have to have that idea of service. If you feel you are serving your community, why would you, would you put a number of how many Unless they are not serious, that's a different thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, great advice. Uh, so yeah, you were mentioning, you know, five to 10 showings a day. What is your follow-up system like? So once you do take them out on a showing, how often do you stay in touch? Do you have a system? Do you have anything you can share on that? I am the worst person when it comes to mem remembering. I don't remember their names. I don't remember what I showed them. I don't, short memory is zero, and I don't have an assistant, so it's a complete chaos. So I come home, I have all these listings that I showed in the file, I put them in, in the CRM, try to create a, an agenda for myself, but usually what happens, because I started texting with them, I go back to my text, I follow up. I really provide them information. I write down what they want on, on the MLS. I write all their questions. So when I come home, I know who I showed it. I know what question they asked. I find them the information, uh, try to get in touch with them. And I was lucky, most of my clients, they are the ones they stay in touch with me because <laughs> this memory is very bad and I, I really I cannot help people with a follow-up. I need an assistant. If anybody knows a good assistant, <laughs> I'll pay you for it. <laughs> uh, Jim, for, for myself, I am computer illiterate, you know. Uh, the best four years of my life were grade three. Um, <laughs> well, what I do is I use this this folder. I don't know if you can see it, where it has different things so what happens is at the back of the folder this is the the let's say three visits ago that i took them out showing the fold in front is the you know showings i did let's say on sunday and then the first fold is the ones i'm showing them today so the the listings i show so if i show one today or three today I sort of know where they are and then they move back in the block because I know we all know if I showed you homes um, sorry uh, three 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 days ago we were out for showings if you didn't like any of those homes I want to keep them but they just moved to the back of the file if we ever have to reference back to be like well remember that one on North Street you know is 699 and it sold for 850 you, you know you have it right there in front of you and I find it's like a little full uh, Rolodex in a way just from Staples. And it it makes me look a little more professional and organized about the homes I've shown them. You know, and then of course you can write your notes on anything. Yeah, I'm a fan of paper too. Lisa, your, uh, your point of view is, <laughs> is requested. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so I do a, a few things. I have an Excel um, uh, sheet where I call it the appointment tracker. And uh, I keep everybody that I've met with. I, I use that and I use my Google Calendar. So uh, whenever I book a, a showing or a buyer consult or a listing consult or anything like that, I, it goes into my Google Calendar. So in the Google Calendar, 
I put um, like SH for showing. I put the client's name. If it's a new client, what I'll do is um, in the notes part of Google Calendar, I will copy the Zolo uh, lead, the, the link to the, uh, the, in the Zolo CRM of that client so that um, I, I can keep track of the clients um, that I that I'm uh, showing or whatever. So everybody, I have everybody in my Google Calendar. And then I also have uh, my appointment tracker where I will make notes. So I'll, I'll see where they're at um, throughout the process. So I'll have like, you know, John Doe, um, he's at the buying stage. Uh, and then I make you know notes on what it is that he's doing. I write down also if I have a, a BRA or already signed. Um, so I do uh, know what's happening with people now. Uh, there's a lot of people that um, you know they're not necessarily now business. So for future business, um, what I do with them, if I think they're uh, hot clients, so if it's like a, a listing that maybe it's coming out in the summer. Then what I do is, again, I put in my Google Calendar and I use the, the colors in Google, Google Calendar so that, um, you know, I'll know that when I get to that month, if I see, you know, something's in red, it'll say call, you know, John Doe. And then again, I have that link to the Zolo CRM so that I can immediately click on that and it will take me to that person and then I'll be able to, uh, to do a follow up. Um, so, and I also do, um, you know, I do a monthly newsletter that I send out. So everybody that, uh, you know, um, that I that I meet with or that I'm showing or whatever, they also get my uh, monthly drip campaigns or uh, follow-up campaigns so that I'm keeping everybody in the loop. Because not everybody is now, now business. It's a lot of it is the future business. So um, you have to sort of... Uh, you know keep everybody in the pipeline awesome yeah i love that so far i've heard from you steven with, the, with the, you know using paper and lisa you rely mostly on excel is there anybody on the panel that uses a crm of course that's always the first question that you agents ask what crm should i use so yeah, just I, I should have said okay i also use i didn't know if people would know it so yes uh, agent locator is a crm that i use uh, it's, it's pretty good. It's uh, not that expensive. I've used many CRMs in the past, so um, but uh, I find that that one is at least not that expensive, and it does a lot of things. Like it, it'll also do uh, mass text messages, uh, mass emailing, things like that. But uh, those are all really important. But I just didn't know if you wanted us to talk about uh, stuff like that too. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's just a question that comes up all the time. So I have a few people requesting to join. So if you guys have questions, definitely let me know. We can uh, unmute you. Uh, John, did you have a question for the for the panel? Uh, no, I don't have a question, but I wanted to say I work along uh, with Lisa. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> and um, I'm here in Edmonton, Alberta. So I'm fairly, fairly new to the real estate world, about three years in. And I joined up with Zolo in July. And uh, since then, I've done a number of transactions uh, with Zolo. One thing it's taught me is to, as soon as you get a request in, is just get on the phone right away, contact the person. If you can't, or if, they, if you can't get a hold of them, get a, an email, a text, something back to them right away and get, get something set up. I make it very simple. Um, so you're interested. Thank you for using the Zolo app. Are you interested in... Uh, several homes, can I arrange a showing for you? And that generally starts a conversation. Um, so I do use a CRM. Uh, I started uh, uh, Facebook advertising and basically uh, what I used to do was set up Facebook ads and I developed a system with the help of some professionals to have those leads go straight into my line death CRM. So as soon as someone clicked on a like, I just I want the just listed homes here, and as soon as they they tap on that and they give their information, they go right into my CRM and then they go into an automatic drip campaign. So that actually over a, about a span of a year and a half, I got around twelve hundred online leads. Like Lisa said, these are generally online leads usually take more time before they come 
to fruition. Uh, but eventually, you know, they start coming in. But really, the I find the Zolo app. It's not as popular in in Alberta as it probably is in other parts of the of the country. Um, but I, you know, I probably do get. Oh, I don't know. I'd say maybe thirty to fifty leads a month out of it, and uh, I've you know I've done well over I don't know probably a, a hundred plus showings uh, with it, and I find the conversion rate is very good with the Zolo app. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, yeah, going back to the CRM, it sounds like a lot of you guys are. It's about relationships over transactions, and the CRM it's just a tool maybe to keep track of you know the deals or you know the touch points or whatever else. But it really does go beyond that. Um, you know, the next level sort of customer service. Is there something that you do a year in order to keep in touch? Uh, do you do sort of annual anything? Um, you know, even though that probably changed last year, is there anything that you can contribute there? Um, for the last eight years, we always deliver pumpkins to all of our clients um, just before Thanksgiving. And so that usually takes us about a week um, and we hand deliver pumpkins to everyone with a little note. This last um, fall with COVID, we, we hand delivered um, little potted mums just to bring people a little bit more cheer because we felt that, you know, flowers always make everyone <laughs> happy and, and it was just something a little bit extra for, for everyone. And that's sort of our, our annual touch point with all yeah. past clients. Yeah, I love that idea. Yeah, I met you. Uh, so I normally, uh, last year was a little different, but before that I used to go every new year, little before and after, with a pack of chocolate and people who drink wine with a bottle of wine. Uh, and, but last year, because there was a lockdown, I still went there, just rang the bell with a uh, mask on face, because they were still accepting online deliveries, you know. And I just rang the bell, saw their faces with a mask, and left the chocolate on their door and just left. This is what I did last year. But oh, like you say, you can say once a year, touch base with them in person, at least. At least once a year in person? Yeah, yeah. And those are for all of your past clients, all of the transactions? Yeah, all of them. I, I miss some this time because some of them have little kids and I don't want them thinking that why am I doing this, which is not actually essential service, you know, that giving chocolates to them is not essential. So, so I avoided people who have old parents and who have young kids. So, yeah. That's great. I think that that's, uh, yeah, definitely something that you see top producers doing, right? Those annual touch points. Yeah, the pop buys. Monique, again, with some great suggestions in the chat here. So pop buys, mail outs. Uh, yeah, so definitely lots of different ways to promote. So outside of the Zolo system, how are you generating leads? Are, do you do direct mail? Um, you know, is there anything outside that you're doing that is working? I love calling you. And I, uh, once I put a house up for sale, uh, I go around the area where I put a house for sale, I do knock. Uh, not now because of COVID, but that's what I used to do. Now, what, when I put up a house for sale, uh, I go to um, Google and try to find the contact numbers. Uh, there is a 411 website that I use, and I try to find the neighbors around the area, and I call them. Cold call them and tell them that I put a house for sale and that they were thinking of selling or buying. Uh, yeah, that's how I do decide. But to be honest, very busy with CRM that I don't get a chance to call to do any cold call and door knocking. So I used to do that. Awesome. Yeah, go ahead, John. On my Facebook page, I got a couple of Facebook pages probably. You know, a thousand to fifteen hundred uh, people. So what what I'll do is I'll set up a, a link to a, a lead page, like a capture form, a landing page, I guess. And uh, uh, so far, just in the past three or four months, I think I generated around two hundred and thirty leads. Just people clicking on on the Facebook page, wanting to get you know just listed homes or. Uh, 
price reduced homes or that kind of stuff. So that's that's been a fairly good low cost way other than actually fa Facebook kind of screwed things up for us because they before you could target a postal code, but now you have to go with a 15 mile, sorry, 15 mile radius. So it kind of dilutes the Facebook advertising. So uh, I found even just a simple thing like that, putting a link on a, a Facebook ad, if you want to get your just listed homes and that's generate, starting to generate some good leads for me. Great, yeah, see you, Mac. If I was uh, attending this meeting or this uh, webinar uh, when I started, the thing that I would have liked to hear, uh, somebody to help me with priorities for myself. So as an agent, the priorities as it, for, you, for, for new agents here, the experience one, they all have their style and they're doing what they're doing. Extra. I'm just talking to the people who are just growing the real estate business. First priority or value for time is when you're meeting with with a list with a seller. That's your main number one thing. You want to list. You want to become. Uh, but the second most priority, you know, the second right after that, that people never talk about. If you are not meeting with a seller, the best time you're spending is you're spending time with buyers. So a lot of people focus, they want to become a listing agent, a listing agent, and they put so much energy on it. But there's so much in the market to go around, right? So if you cannot do a listing, be with the buyer. So that's the second most important time you can spend in real estate. Be with a client. That buyer will open doors for you. Will that buyer, 50% of the buyer, they are sellers as well, right? Not every buyer is a first-time home buyer. So have your priorities set. Facebook is fantastic. Uh, putting postcards out is excellent. But the most important thing, in my opinion, is your, your community of influence. There is a, a secret number of 150. Find 150 people that you know, and they know you by, even if they just know your name. If you see them in the supermarket, they will shake their hand and they will agree to you. Find their address, send them a monthly postcard, a reminder, and don't be so pushy. Just, hi, this is so-and-so. Give them an information. Give them an update about the market. That 150 people every year gives you 5 to 10 transactions to start with. So go to your church, your mosque, whatever you go where, community, club, and service your community to the best of your ability. Provide them information. Advice, help, whatever you can, move them you know, around, show them the way and open the doors that they don't know even existed. So if you have that kind of mindset, before you know it, you are very much trusted in your community and they tell each other. The other thing is don't think the people who know that you are an agent, they always thinking of you as an agent and remember you. Your cousin will sell their home and they will, after they sell it, you will see them and they tell you, oh, I forgot CMAC, they're an agent. So you have to be engaged, you have to be involved, you have to always remind them in a nice way, not in a way that they run away from you. That's so true. It sounds like the focus for all of you is really activities over results. Results just kind of happen because you do the activities consistently. Um, would you say that that's true, Stephen and Kristen? Is there something that you do religiously every day that you know results and results? No, I, we don't. For me, or I think maybe for both of us, there there isn't an exact routine. You know, um, it's it's difficult. We have two young daughters, so only one of us can leave the house for showings and if Kristen goes on a showing then she really needs a sitter for the three of us because I can't be left alone either you know <laughs> to behave you know um it, yeah I really think um C Max sort of said that I think you have to look at one of your best personality traits about yourself and use that in your business use that in your showings whether it's on the phone, in person, um, you know, to to kind of um, uh, show a little bit about who you are and and create that bond with the with the lead. You know, uh, I know it was 
very helpful for a lot of people, especially for us. We found ourselves very um, uh, good at converting leads in open houses, you know, when we're more face to face, you know, and um, with open houses not being there, it means you have to um, really present yourself at your best, show that you're knowledgeable um, and, and maybe use the term, you know, to win them over, you know. There, there are so many choices in real estate and C-Max said it as well. And I think we all know it. Everyone that we know, even our own brothers, sisters, cousins, everyone knows a good five to 10 realtors. It's you have to shine and you have to have that confidence that that shows you are that knowledgeable and that you are, you know, um, the best in the world, you know, a world class agent, if you will, that they're going to think about you maybe as the top two out of the eight on their their list, if that makes sense to people, you know, uh, at least you're, you've got a better chance of standing out to friends, family, uh, and that circle of influence. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Thank you for that. Uh, so I'm also getting comments here in the chat. So again, feel free to, you know, ask your questions here and I'll, I'll bring them up for sure. Uh, we have uh, Monique again mentioning FISBOs, that, uh, that those are great for her business. Is there anybody here on the panel who does FISBOs, has maybe an approach that has worked for them in the past that they could recommend? No, <laughs> see, Mike is waving. No. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah. All right. So it works for Monique. It, it sounds like she brought the buyer and was able to put a for sale sign on their lawn. So that's, that's a great technique. So in terms of contacting FISBOs, uh, yeah. Do you guys know a strategy in terms of contacting FISBOs if people wanted to specialize in that or approach for sale by owners? I think there's a website that you can find. Yeah, Monique is saying that the neighbors then call me with the uh, for sale sign on their lawn. So that's great. So yeah, that's definitely a technique, but uh, it sounds like you guys are relying on those Olo leads and then of course your outside effort. So staying involved in the community. Is there anything else that you would recommend to a new agent to focus on to supplement those Olo leads that they get? Dwayne, do you have any suggestions? Oops, you're on mute. Better? Yeah, I could see you talking to me, but it was on mute. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, I think it's important. Uh, I like I like what Steve was saying. I think it's important that you be yourself because you can you can read books, you can get all this information, but if you're trying to be somebody else or trying to act out of your character. People can see that you're just trying to say something and don't look too hungry. Don't seem like you have to have their house. Every time they talk to you, all you're talking about is real estate. Just, just be yourself, be a person of integrity and always carry a business card. Strike up a conversation. Just find out, hey, what do you do for a living? Ask them, see what they're doing and, and just start striking up a conversation and let them ask you. So what do you do? Oh, I'm a realtor. Oh, you know what? I, I'm thinking about moving into the area. Just kind of don't be always the one that's aggressively going after business. Just be yourself. Uh, be a person of integrity. Work hard. And uh, you're going to do well. I think that's important that we don't just try to look at what somebody else is, is doing. Because we all have our ways of being successful. But I do think you have to be who you are and play into your strengths as, as an individual. So pick what you're good at. I love that too. Um, all right. So Lisa, I'm getting a question here about your online buyer consultation. Can you give us a little bit more of a, a walkthrough of how you do that? Um, sure. Well, um, so I, I, I use a script with the Zolo leads that um, uh, encourages them to meet with me online. And then uh, when I when I do my presentation, well, the first thing that I start out is uh, asking them, uh, you know, information about themselves, so basic information, and uh, and then included in that is uh, all the information on, uh, you know, have you spoken with a mortgage broker? Do you have a down payment saved? Whatever. 
And, uh, and then I also share my screen with them so that uh, I'm able to show them stuff like, um, for example, uh, the TREB map. Uh, using using the uh, map so that we can pinpoint uh, locations on where they're looking to buy. Um, also talk to them about being, if they're first-time home buyers, talk to them about uh, uh, the rebates of being a first-time home buyer, land transfer tax, all that stuff. So I'm able to share my screen and show them this stuff. And, uh, and then I go through, uh, so uh, I ask them a whole ton of questions on what it is that they're looking for. And uh, in terms of uh, you know the perfect perfect house, and then uh, and then I go through my presentation, um, which the whole thing it probably takes me about an hour or so to do the consult. But the benefit of doing that is because number one, nobody nobody has ever sort of done that for them, and uh, and also nobody has taken the time to really ask them you know, what it is that they're looking for, because, uh, you know, mo most agents will just sort of put people on a prospect match and kind of walk away. So now they have an agent who's uh, sitting in front of them, asking them all sorts of questions before, you know, I, I personally, I don't, I mean, I appreciate that a lot of people go out and show properties. Um, I try and avoid that until I've had this in-depth conversation. And, uh, and then um, I, 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 try and answer every single question that they'll have. Um, I talk to them about the whole bidding process uh, because the reason why it's important to do that is uh, to, to, so that buyers are from the beginning, you know, realizing that it's not going to be, you know, that they're gonna be getting these deals out there, that the, the reality is we're in a, uh, a bidding war uh, market so they need to get pre-approved, the importance of being pre-approved. Um, so I, I try and educate them along the way to try and make the process happen a lot more uh, quickly and efficiently. So for me, everything is about, you know, a system and a process. And I, and I just kind of do the same thing over and over again. And that's, you know, that's what has worked for me. But that's, you know, that's how I do things. So... Uh, obviously, everybody on this panel has success, you know, doing their own thing. That's just uh, what I found has worked for me the best. Awesome. Thanks for that. Yeah, you mentioned systems and you mentioned a script. Can you tell us briefly what that is for the colleagues? Lisa, do you have a script for, you mentioned you have a script for Zolo leads that works for you? Oh, you're muted again. Does anybody use scripts or is it just more of a natural conversation? Himanshu, what's your approach? What's your sound? So I'm, I'm actually very natural. I, I, I don't have a script. Uh, yeah. because every script doesn't work. I've seen in my experience, it doesn't work with everyone. Um, it doesn't work with me, I would say. So I am very natural. I just ask them what they need. And I always start with when they want to see the house. So mostly it ends there. You know, they tell it's time. And there's uh, all the script I use is when I meet them. So uh, I try to be as short and phone as possible because then when I meet them in person is a better opportunity to know everything. This is what I do. Yeah, Kristen. Um, we've used scripts in the past, but I, you know, I think a lot of the, the scripts are more just like natural conversations that you end up having with clients that you you know, you're qualifying them, but at the same point in time, you're getting to understand what their needs are in the buying or selling process. And it's, you know, it's scripted, but it, it really needs to be more of a natural um, way to have a conversation so it doesn't sound um, not like yourself, right? Because you got, you still have to be true to yourself and, and be authentic. I think too, Jane, is um, a lot of people are, uh, 
reaching out a lead about a home that we don't even know. We haven't shown it yet. We haven't, we maybe didn't even see it come on the market. There's so many homes out there that uh-huh. you, you don't want to get yourself stuck trying to answer how many bathrooms it has. We might not even have it on our screen. So I, I think if you can sort of direct them in a direction you want by like, you know, how long have you been looking for a home, Jane? You know, are you a first time buyer? Would you have a home to sell? Would you rather sell your home first? Or are you more comfortable buying before you sell? You, you, you get a lot more out and you start to guide them down the street where you might want to take them and maybe not overpowering, but taking control of, might be the best word that, that then they look up to you as, um, as an, again, an expert, you know, in what, what you're doing and, and lead them that way, you know, um, you know, uh, have you been looking on your own? Have you been, you know, looking with an agent? Like it then sometimes brings out, do they have an agent? You know, ever again, goes back to everyone knows an agent, but are they comfortable using that agent or do they don't want to use friends or family and they want to, you know, keep it professional. Um, to go back to a, a little bit of another question I think came up is we talk about when we're showing homes to people, market education, you know, time is important to all of us with family. We talk to our people about the first two times that we go out to look at homes. that's market education. Do not bring your checkbook. You're not buying a home, you know, in some cases it could be three, but at that point, it allows you to say a bit later on, remember now we've been out three times for market education. You guys now know that you want Oshawa or you want Durham region or whatever it might be, or you know you want a semi-detached, perfect. I would suggest now bring your checkbook, you know? So you're sort of educating them to, we don't want to speed up the process. We want to be professional and educate them, but we also want to guide them in the right direction that, you know what, you're ready. You you know, have some confidence in buying a home. You know, we've gotten your pre-approval. You know, we walked you through all those steps. And, and it allows you to guide them along that process, if that makes sense. Yeah, that does. That makes great sense. Um, yeah, no, I completely agree. We've got uh, one last question coming in before I think we're going to be at time. Uh, but how do you handle the call when leads get offended with the qualifying questions? So I know you guys have said that you don't really do the qualifying questions. It's more about getting to the in-person interview. Uh, but if they do seem a little bit um, not forthcoming, how do you deal with, how do you deal with that? Okay, um, we are at the bottom of the list when it comes to trust. The only one below us is card salespeople. So don't be offended when people really don't want to give you information. They're calling a number, they don't know who's at the other end, at the other end and usually there are a lot of uh, bully agents in the market and they had maybe bad experience with them. So if, in my opinion, you take them out, don't ask them the questions, it's a you become familiar with the with the market every time you enter a house. So take this as you are previewing the houses that come to the to your market, and instead of just previewing it, you are taking a, a, a prop, you know, um, a prospect or a lead with you and showing them. So your five dollar gas you are spending is the best money you spend. Take them there, show them, show them what you can bring, and don't be afraid that. You tell them, I'm a new agent. There's so many ways people teach you, tell them, they ask you, are you, how old, how long you've been an agent, to tell them, oh, forever, just to judge the answer. Be frank, be frank. You know what I tell people? I tell them, I don't have short memory. So I will forget your name next time I see you. I don't remember my kids' names. So forgive me up front. When you ask me about houses with numbers and names, I don't remember anything. I tell them up front, and then they become very relaxed. They ask me a question, and they tell me, they, they follow up, oh, you will find us the answer. I know you don't know it now. And it's fine. People know that I am not playing games with them. What they get, what they see is what they get. You know what I, see, what I tell people when they when you meet first time, a first time home buyer? I tell them, you know what? I want to be your agent for the coming 25 years. What is your 25 year plan? And they go, what? We, we don't know anything. We never thought about it. So we go together. We spend a few minutes, just, you know, just giving them options, 
what they might have as 25 year plan. So they realize this guy is with us. He's not wanting to sell a house and run. He thinks long term, he's going to coach us, he's going to show us the way, he has all the information we need. The level of trust suddenly goes from here to here. Now they ask me about, can you do it this way or that? I have a Lebanese client, and they don't trust, and they don't deal except with the Lebanese community. They call me CMAC, I want to put an offer on, on such and such. How much shall I put? I said, like at 700,000. Okay, put it, send me to sign. This has, after several times, he wants to put an offer, and I tell him, no, don't do that, don't do this. And they know that you're working for them, and you are not really caring if they buy or not. You care what's best for your client. It is absolutely important. Set the expectation right. It's like your marriage. Real estate is like marriage. Every client is a marriage relationship. If you don't put the right expectation at the beginning, you will end up in a divorce and sometimes it's ugly. They take you to the board. My last comment, I promise. I love your insight. Thank you so much. Um, awesome. Well, this was amazing. I think we are at time. We're two minutes over. So I know that there were some questions coming in at the end here. If you guys want to reach out, uh, I'm sure they're all available to answer your questions. So uh, again, congratulations, you guys, on a fantastic year last year. I wish you all the best this year. And I look forward to doing this again in 2022. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Congrats to everyone. Stay safe.